Is the cookie cheaper than 75 grand? Gosh, I hope. <laughs> Although, our, uh, you know, Scott Graves, our crew chief, his daughter makes homemade cookies. She makes them every week for the team. And this week's was chocolate chip with graham cracker and it's a s'mores cookie. It's got a marshmallow on top of it. You're having a bad day. Go to our holler pop. We'll get you a cookie. Well, yeah. uh, maybe some people should go there before uh, <laughs> if they need a break. But um, I'm curious, what did you think of the $75,000 fine to Stenhouse as the highest to any driver for throwing a punch? Did you feel that was excessive at all? Um, I didn't think a lot about it, Bob. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got so much drama going on in my own stuff. Um, so you're asking me to think about it, aren't you? Yeah. Is well, that really the you, question? If you don't think, if you don't have an opinion, just so you don't have. I don't know opinion. if I have, don't have opinion. Mm -hmm. See, I, I just have this personal code that there shouldn't be any fighting in the garage unless it's in the top ten. If your wreck happens in the top ten, okay. If your wreck doesn't happen in the top ten, there should be no fighting allowed. That's that's how I feel about it. <laughs> I think that's a very fair rule because you know if, if, if you're not running in the top 10 it's like man I need to go work on my own stuff I ain't got time to be dealing with all this drama but well, that's my rule that ain't NASCAR's rule so but you, you asked how I felt that's how I felt no fighting if you're not in the top 10 so why don't you go to the hauler and let them know your idea <laughs> um, I, I think I've got a lot of ideas they don't care about <laughs> you know what that's probably pretty smart of them <laughs> Do you care, Brad, or have any opinion on drivers get fined for fighting or showing their emotions, but then NASCAR promotes it, right? Like, it's all over social, it's all over videos. Is, is there a difference there, or is that... Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a conundrum. <laughs> uh, if I'm NASCAR, I mean, certainly I want to um, be careful about the message I'm sending uh, through the garage area, and even more than the garage area through the other levels of the sport about what may or may not be acceptable, Kelly. And so I, I understand why they need to react. But then I also understand this competing agenda of, uh, you know, somebody gathers attention, garners attention, you know, put it, and whenever there's, you know, fights in the garage area because it communicates a level of passion. And, and that's, passion itself is not a bad thing, right? Um, so, you know, I, I think it's just this spot that our sport's in where we're like, hey, we, we want the attention. We want people to like us. We want people to talk about us. We don't always get that when we have great events. And it, it seems kind of silly to me. I mean, we have some, we've had some great races this year. And some of the moments that I think we would like to break through as a sport to and no offense to you guys, non-traditional media uh, that, that grows our sport. Doesn't seem to do that, but then somebody throws a punch and, you know, all of a sudden we're on all kinds of non-traditional media. And, you know, I, I just have a lot of empathy for NASCAR. They're, yeah. You know, if I was in their shoes, I, I don't know how I'd handle it any different. You know, because when you post a story of something really interesting in the garage, it gets some reposts, etc. Even if you're posting Ryan Newman have a battle at another track, where there's a shove, all of a sudden, it reposts go through yes, the roof, right? Yes, so, yeah. so what are people doing? They're doing what they're doing. That's what the people want to see. Uh, you think it, so? I mean, it, it seems that way. It doesn't mean it's always right. In fact, often they want to see it because it's not right. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we are still an entertainment-based business. Brad, I know this weekend, this race has always been extremely special to you. You won it a few years ago, and I know you tend to have a lot going on with the Triple Flag Foundation surrounding Memorial Day weekend. What have you got going this weekend or you know, in the surroundings here around the 600 River Foundation? Yeah, well, thank you for asking. That's a really nice question. I know we're doing a number of different things with some first responders, which... You know, I, I hear the flag all the time. First responders, it's not Memorial Day, but you know, they're all kind of near and dear to our heart. Uh, we uh, we have one of the families from someone I honored last year here at the racetrack, which is great. Uh, we launched our tribute to veterans program, for the Southern 500 this week, which is exciting as well. Uh, so it's a great way to connect all those things. The, the best way to connect it would be just you know to win and, and to be able to, to honor the. 
of those who have fallen with the American flag and, and so forth. Uh, we did do a nice trip to uh, uh, Huntington Ingalls in Virginia and, and go look at their submarines and get the story of um, uh, the commander that's honored on, on my uh, car, who was a submarine commander who died, uh, uh, you know, effectively in battle. So it's nice to, to know those things and be able to, to have them in your hearts. Have you been able to tie more of that in since built submarines has come on board? Yeah, I think we just continue to grow that relationship. And uh, you know, I'm proud to be a part of it. I'm proud of what it stands for and, and for our country and a critical need. Brad, third year of going to Gateway. How has it gone, in your opinion, and what do you think is the key to having success? Well, it hasn't gone good for me. I haven't ran good there at all, <laughs> you know. Uh, but the racing there seems like it's been pretty good. Good battles for the lead and the win and, uh, uh, you know, a lot of action. Brad, are you, have you been tuned into what Larson's been doing with the Indy Double? Um, will you be watching or caring about it tomorrow morning? I mean, I, I've been watching it, what I can. You know, honestly, I've got a lot going on. I, I probably won't be able to, to uh, follow it all. I, I, Follow, follow it all to the fullest, not follow it all. Um, but I think it's great for the sport. It's great for all motorsport, NASCAR, Indian car. And it's, it's a great story of how high tides can raise all ships with, you know, him running the double. I think it draws attention to, to both series. Are you okay? Last week they delayed the start 15 minutes. Would you be okay if they delayed the start Sunday for a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I, I don't let things like that upset me. I think there's some people that to do, but that I don't let things like that upset me. What's the limit then? Is it 30 minutes? Is it an hour? Oh, well, that's a different question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. 15 minutes seems like a, a good uh, good spot to live in, right? Yeah. Um, you know, if, if somebody's an hour or two behind, I think that might be a little different. Brad, it wasn't long ago that we were talking about, oh man, the Fords haven't gone to victory lane yet. The, uh, there's some teething troubles with the dark horse, and now all of a sudden you win Darlington. Uh, Joy wins North Pole for her last week. Um, do you feel like this is what the dark horse was capable of all along, or have you? Yeah, you know, the car's any? very capable. I, you know, there, there's always things that we can pick apart on the dark horse, but it's very capable to, to the, the competitors we have. Team side, we need to get it right, and. Uh, we have to execute. Regarding the, you were talking about the drama with fighting. Regarding the Xfinity race today, you were part of the drivers only broadcast. Yeah. Um, first of all, how did, how much do you enjoy being a part of that? Uh, well, it's always good to be a part of the broadcast. You know, it's an important part of our sport. It tells the story to our fans, and uh, the drivers only version is a nice little, you know, kind of nuance to, to that that we get to do every once in a while in the Xfinity series. And uh, I'm proud that they keep asking me back. Now, when in the Xfinity Series, trucks, younger drivers, when they have their battles, what are your thoughts on that, be it Austin Hill today or other scuffs? Uh, what are my thoughts? Uh, better them than me. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, they got to figure it out. Um, and, uh, you know, ultimately battles and scuffs like that hurt everybody. They, they hurt both teams. And, um, you know, you, you certainly want to draw a line in the sand, but can't let it hurt your own performance but do you remember like when you were that age your thoughts like is there any wisdom you want to impart on them or is oh that... no gosh no they got to figure out for themselves the good the bad and the ugly and that's part of what makes life special all right thank you we're like thank you. preparing for the longest race of the year sort of how do you mentally prepare for that especially uh, after how you said it's yeah it um yeah right now i'm not the most excited but um you know it uh yeah, I think physically and, and mentally, all that stuff, I'm good. Just um, it's definitely a long one, so you got to stay, uh, got to stay in it all night. Have good, good people around you, good spotter, good crew chief, keep you in the game. But um, yeah, I'm definitely happy to have been been through a couple of them now and um, know a little bit more to expect. And like I said, uh, it doesn't doesn't make you feel any shorter for sure, but um, you know, know know a little bit more to expect. You are, uh, I know you're a big fan of racing. Uh, Kyle Larson doing the double. Have you been able to sort of? Pay attention to that in, in some way, and uh, what are your thoughts on uh, him trying to do that tomorrow? Yeah, it's uh, it's super exciting to watch. Like you said, as a race fan, I think it's one of the coolest things. Um, you know, I wasn't really old enough to really remember, right, when, like, Tony Stewart or Kurt Busch or those guys did it. But, um, yeah, I can't imagine. I was just watching kind of like a little clip of, like, when Tony first did it. Like, he was um, he's struggling pretty bad at the end of the, the 600 here. And, um, 
you know, since then, I think guys have, have kind of known more what to expect, right? About having IVs, having doctors kind of come with you and, and be ready for it all. But um, yeah, like you said, as a race fan, it's really cool to watch and, and definitely hope he does uh, does well. Obviously, next year the 34 is open. I know that obviously no driver has been announced for 2025 for the 34, but what are the I mean, v qualities that you value in a teammate? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's, it's hard when you're, you know, two polar opposites. I think that's the hardest thing for, um, you know, having a teammate, it's, it's tougher to work with, but, um, you know, honestly for me, it's, I feel like all drivers are, are not too different really. It, um, I've had a number of different teammates over the years and, um, has always, have always worked really well with everybody. So, um, you know, in the end, we, we all want what's best for ourselves. We're all a little bit selfish and that can get in the way sometimes, but, um, in the end you're, you're working as a team and, um, you know, whatever the saying is, right? I think high tides raise all ships. I think that's kind of what, um, you know, kind of the attitude and, and the mentality that, that makes a good teammate. You've run well on road courses and no one's coming up. And Here, John, our name check. Uh, obviously on social media, you, you tweeted about the, uh, the, the Bob Pockers shirt. So how, you know, how fun was the mo how fun was that moment? And how did that, you know, get, get made? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a really fun moment. Uh, I enjoyed kind of, coming up with that idea earlier this week and um, actually getting it printed and wearing it here today and giving Bob one. So, um, I mean, you can't get much better than that. It's it's pretty uh, pretty neat to see um, Bob be right there in the middle of the fight last week and the camera get flipped around on him. Um, he's been in quite a bit, uh, in the middle of quite a bit of those, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. And also you guys um, brought the uh, Garagant throwback last week at North Wilkes where you brought it again this week. Uh, good luck. Or, or uh, just a good paint scheme? Is there other reason for bringing it back? Um, I think just that awesome paint scheme, uh, something different than we've been running, and uh, super pumped and, and proud to be coloring or to be carrying uh, the Dollar Tree Family Dollar Colors this weekend. Um, every one of their uh, associates and everyone that is a part of the uh, Family Dollar Dollar Tree team is, is amazing to be able to represent and uh, show their brand here on Memorial Day weekend. Here. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, John. Thanks. Steven Stump of FrontChurch.com here. Come back for more great racing videos, and if you like us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.